All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Sorry for the delay. I did try to cast it yesterday if you guys are on the daily casting schedule. If you are, thank you very much. I definitely appreciate it. Um, but yesterday, well, there were no... Um, well, yesterday, Blizzard released a new patch. No real patch changes, patch notes that I saw. It just broke the overlay and also corrupted or made replays get out of sync. I'm not quite sure why that would happen or what would cause replays to get out of sync, but well, needed to wait a day and get new replays out there. This one is going to be a game between Sock and Moon. First thing I'm going to tell you is this game is not recommended to me by anyone. This is just a random selection I chose today. Hopefully it does not disappoint. And with two names like Moon and Sock, well, it shouldn't. Let's go ahead and break things down in this human versus night elf matchup. It is going to be Keeper of the Grove over Fire Lord or Demon Hunter this time around. So, well, night elf actually having a wide array of options to open up with. And, well, it is going to be Sock that tries to figure out what that follow-up strategy is going to be. Keeper of the Grove should be popping out here in just a moment. Now, gonna, well, Ancient of War is going to switch over to that Forest Troll Berserker. Uh, the Forest Troll Trapper not actually getting any ensnares there, interestingly enough. And that Forest Troll Berserker does take a massive beating every time the Ancient of War um, takes a swipe. Ancient of Wars do deal normal damage, hence um, why it was able to deal like close to 60 damage even after armor. Archmage going to be just shy of level 2, does have a Ring of Protection plus 4, which will help it early on against all of those Archer and Treant and Keeper of the Grove poking but most likely will be sold later. All right, going after that giant sea turtle first. No additional militia being called over, just a lone footman. These sea turtles making their way over. One footman waiting for orders after getting rallied as we're looking at the Archmage now at level two, picking up a Cloak of Shadows. Meanwhile, Keeper of the Grove continuing this aggressive creep pattern and um, calling on these forces of nature. Two of these forces of nature will dissolve into nothing right there as this last Murloc gets taken down too. All right, Archmage gonna well try to push pressure back on that Wisp. Keeper of the Grove may come around, perhaps get an entangle here. Water Elemental very low on hit points. He's purposely gonna try to back away. And one quick entangle from the Keeper of the Grove is gonna mean a quick death for one of these Wisps. There's the detonation and the Footman actually able to escape at 39 hit points here. So this one Footman gonna try and run all the way home. Meanwhile, the Archers are gonna go ahead and Shadow Melt and then come back out to poke once more. Great job minimizing the experience you give to your opponent on both sides as well. Moon tries for it once more. <coughs> Low hit point archers retreating to the back here. Footman, is it just, just going to get denied? No, it does not. Archmage doesn't do enough damage with the attack and the archer finishes the job. Meanwhile, Keeper of the Grove hanging back over here by the um, by this Fountain of Health. Are we going to see aggroing of the creeps? We are. And now the Keeper of the Grove being forced to retreat back. Not quite sure how that Red Drake knew who woke him up. Tracing after that Archmage there as the Keeper of the Grove now comes on by. Perhaps to try and get some auto attacks. The auto attack not able to take down that Water Elemental. Timed life right there. Now, more engaging going back and forth. Archmage going to pick up that Tome of Intelligence. That is a lot of low hit point units. Easy for the Archers to try and pick off here as the Archmage is still fighting its way through. Archmage does get to level 3. And now the Keeper of the Grove exchanging blows with the Archmage. Moon going to be forced to retreat back here. Archers are still here. Peasants are back in their peasant form and not in their militia form. Not going to be able to deal nearly as much damage. What is Moon doing? Moon trying to reposition him himself using the scroll of Town Portal at the last possible moment. Let that arrow fly. Archer shoots an arrow, gets teleported away, and well, that gets shot in the back. Keeper of the Grove now just shy of level 3, and with that hero, with that footman kill, that hero archer arrow, as well, a low hit point footman now looking to heal up at the Fountain of Health. Now, Fountain of Health very useful for the Night Elf at during Nightfall, Shadow Meld allowing those archers to regenerate hit points. But one thing to remember and consider, archers don't have high hit point bases to begin with. So the regenerative rate on those archers is not going to be um, 
well, particularly high or uh, useful. All right, Keeper of the Grove now coming around. Perhaps going to try and get a quick kill on a peasant or something of that. Something there. There are some tree ends. Going to go after one of those peasants. You can see the town hall nearly done. Scout tower purposely, well, getting surrounded by the peasants to try and get some work in. Keeper of the Grove may try and get to level three. There's the repairs. And here we are. Here we go. Arcane tower nearly completed. There's a staff of teleportation inbound. Archmage shows up. There's dust of appearance getting through thrown down as well as the um, units are revealed once more. Keeper of the Grove does get up to level 3, now an additional tree and summoned at the level 2 a force of nature as the Arch Archmage is looking to well, clean the things up. Keeper of the Grove, such a well, such an effective harassment hero and if you are on the wrong side of the harassment, I understand why um, you would hate the Keeper of the Grove. Night Elf seems to have a large number of options early on for their hero play as we now see a moon following things up with a panda. Breath of Fire adding in good AoE damage to the mix once more. Water Elemental may get blown over here in just a second and Sox Expo does not look like it will be able to pay for itself as the Keeper of the Grove and the a Brewmaster still racking up quite a bit of damage. All right, are we going to see more and more peasants get blown over here? Here. That is the question. Scout Tower may end up just getting taken down. There's another Breath of Fire. Is the Keeper of the Grove going to get engagement against against all of these other units as peasant after peasant after peasant is just falling? All right, Scout Tower about halfway done to being upgraded. Brewmaster already halfway to level 2. Archmage can try and shoo away these heroes who no longer have any more mana. And that is the thing here. Without mana, the Brewmaster and the Keeper of the Grove's harassment will be forced to come to an end. Now, as anyone who's gone up against Night Elf harassment knows early on in the game, um, well, Keeper of Night Elves rarely have any her mana issues as we see an archer getting taken down there. Qu quick entangle, Archmage, Staff of Teleportations back off to the north trying to clean up some of these wisps and somehow, some way, Sock able to establish up that expo. All right. Poor day to be a peasant. Um, yeah, just, I guess, red, constantly wearing red shirts. Um, not a good idea for these peasants. Maybe they're part of the security team on the Enterprise. But, yep, they were f first to fall. Archmage, going to go ahead and drop down a water elemental. Go after the rock golem and this mud golem creep camp. Trying to clear up the all of that slow as a goblin shredder joins in on the battle. 34 to 61, fairly fast attack against this forest troll high priest with medium armor. Those peasants have a family. Um, uh, yep, well, all units here have a family. Well, what's the saying? Uh, all peasants have a mother and a father, like so many do. All right. A player's forces are under or, oh, the peasants had a mother and a father, like so many do. Archmage gonna perhaps try and clear out some additional creep camps here. No, backing up. We are not at tier two, so we're not gonna see that second hero yet. Meanwhile, footmen are trying to go up against that dryad and perhaps trying to block it out here. The dryad. Oh, is it going to be able to get dance around here? No, ends up aggroing into the Fountain of Health. And the Sock will take that there, forcing a Dryad, well, to get corralled into the Fountain of Health and getting taken down, even though it didn't provide experience. All right, Blacksmith. Uh, scout, another Scout Tower being placed down. Arcane Vault getting added in as well. Meanwhile, we're looking at the Keeper of the Grove hanging around here. Uh, we're going to see some entangles. If the Keeper of the Grove had level 2 entangle, perhaps he would summon some treants and try and get some kills here. Meanwhile, this Arcane Tower is about to be um, about to be put to a test here as the Keeper of the Grove is going to try and go after some of these units. There's some treants, and well, there's multiple targets to try and attack now. Meanwhile, Panda is going to find the well, wrong end of the Archmage's fireballs here and poking getting underway. Scroll of Healing used. That's going to buy a little bit of time. Is the Archer going to get taken down? No, it is not. Beautifully done there. Meanwhile, Keeper of the Grove down um, while well, trying to harass this expo again. These tree ants could end up falling soon. Meanwhile, Archmage now on the wrong end of Dryad um, poisoned spears. That slow poison quickly, well, 
um, quickly um, taking that effect there, making it difficult for that Archmage to get away. All right, Archmage teleports back here. Um, Archmage may try and use what well, summons up a Water Elemental going after some of these targets now. Footmen do need a backup. Scroll of Regeneration going to be needed there. Scroll of Regeneration, is it going to be popped yet? No, not yet. Bunch of low hit point units in the back as the Treants again getting cleaned up. Archmage going to turn back around. Are we going to see... Nope, Staff of Teleportation, Inbound Panda. Level 3 Panda ready to blow things over against all of these units. And there is, well, Breath of Fire. There goes that Breath of Fire. Moon's real Panda quickly getting targeted. There's Siphon Mana from the Blood Mage to take away some of that precious mana. Keeper of the Grove doesn't have enough for a, a, for a, an Entangle to stop that channeling as this, well, it will be coming to an end. 48 supply compared to 49. Coming back through, Water Elemental dissolves and returns to the river as the Keeper of the Grove gets to level 4. Scroll of Regeneration here across multiple um, well, footmen and riflemen, some peasants as well. Panda trying to lot stay on target and perhaps um, well, disrupt some of the healing. Meanwhile, Arcane Vault is going to have a little bit of problems as we see well, the Breath of Fire blowing it over quickly. Footmen do have Defend, but Siphon Mana now from that Keeper of the Grove making sure that no Entangles go down as we're looking at the Brewmaster getting forced and pushed back once more. No Arcane Vault. More farms being built in the back here by Sock. Perhaps he's trying to go bl uh, blow into well, low upkeep here. A Priest also hanging back as well. One Guard Tower. That seems enough to deter the Keeper of the Grove from engaging as the Keeper of the Grove knows that the human army is still nearby. All right, a couple of quick and snares here. Archmage going to come around the corner, spot the Night Elf army, trying to get in a little bit more free damage against some of these units. Um, well, racking up some damage against that Keeper of the Grove who backs away again. Arch, Archer also getting in some lobs here, but Sock doesn't seem to know what he really wants to target. Not getting any true damage anywhere as the Force Troll High Priest gets taken out. Manual of Health. Uh, Sounded like a sentry ward was placed down, but I don't see... Oh, no. Is that one? Nope. No. Coming back through. Arcane Vault being rebuilt. Dryad's Keeper of the Grove ready to put in pressure. Treants, the forest is alive as the well, Keeper of the Grove comes across with the Dryads once more. All right. Sock seems to just be everywhere that, um, well, that moon is not able to just constantly put in um, odd odd pressure as we're looking at the dryads trying to get away one or two more shots needed no the dryad able to dance back around panda is he going to turn around and breath the fire across these units he thought about it but instead just maintained the the channeling lock on that drain mana for a bit too long yeah that uh, that would have been an empty breath of fire anyway Arch or the priest have adept training Archmage has level 2 Brilliant Aura, and that would have quickly have been healed up. We are getting the castle, and um, we are getting up a, an Arcane Vault back across here, but once more, the Moon is just able to constantly be where his opponent doesn't expect him to be, and finding ways to deal damage. Alright, we're looking at 50 supply compared to 59. Sock does have a considerably larger army. Um, 47 compared to 26. Moon has a, a large number of workers. And still, somehow, um, Moon is just constantly positioning his units in a way that is advantageous for him. Keeper of the Grove summoning up some more Treants back across here. Orb of Venom. Moon now at Tier 3. Are we going to be looking at bears? Um, difficult to say as Moon and now going into um, low upkeep. Yeah, 54 supply compared to 36 in terms of the army size. As the Dryads once more poke apart um, some low hit point sorceresses uh, back across here. Both sides are running up on two bases. No one has really even tried to take the center Ogre Lord, I don't think think i think they just ran by it yeah ogre lord is still on the map and offering a, a very powerful item um, when the time comes now this split hero play by moon always very dangerous as the keeper of the grove trying to summon up more things as well all right siphon mana M brewmaster trying to retreat back a little bit more heals going down 64 supply compared to 60 as the units are retreating back again keeper of the grove trying to hide once more and will be retreating back home um, well, momentarily. 
All right, we are going in to improve Strength of the Wild 2-1 upgrades shortly for those uh, Dryads and those um, eventual Bears, I assume. Meanwhile, Panda and these units just coming back across here. We uh, do see Chimeras, so if you were wondering where Moon's supply was going, we are looking at two Chimeras sitting right across here. Where is the... How come I don't see the Chimera roost? Am I just going blind? A player's forces are under attack. Coming down, Panda. A brewmaster trying to re brewmaster trying to retreat back here. They're like the flying machine, like, ain't, huh? Okay. Nope, nope. Those are really there. All right, Keeper of the Grove trying to engage here, trying to take down the Scout Tower once more. Scout Tower does get taken down. Wow sudden zoom again um that was not me siphon mana onto the brewmaster archmage trying to go after all of these targets um once more as the keeper of the grove now bouncing around to the far side using a potion of lesser invulnerability in order to get away a third chimera getting trained up from somewhere this is another bug replay five o'clock five o'clock base yep so yeah no there uh, Okay, Priestess of the Moon. Yeah, just Priestess of the Moon now out here on the battlefield. Are we going to see a Staff of Preservation? No, Scroll of Town Portal. Losing uh, losing sight there. Scroll of Town Portal. What is that Priestess of the Moon doing? All right, heading back off to the north. Perhaps um, this replay was about to be bugged too. All right. Oh, the Chimera Roos are off here. There we are. I just didn't see them off to the side. Nah, bottom right of Night Elf Base. You're right. All right, so Chimera's with True Shot Aura. Uh, representing a pretty, a pretty big danger right there. Are we looking at the siege damage? We are not. So we, are, we do not have any of that siege range damage as the Overlord pretty much going to get absolutely blasted in a split second. Claws of Attack plus 12. Now on that Brewmaster who does have Drunken Brawler. Priestess of the Moon needs to be very careful here. Doesn't want to end up falling. Level 4 now on the Panda. So that Claws of Attack plus 12. Um, coupled with level 2 Drunken Brawler um, is, well, very powerful indeed. All right, coming back through. Flying Machines are trying to take down these Chimeras. Chimeras are just going to show up to the party and say, you know what, one Arcane Tower gone, another Arcane con Tower gone, and now going straight after these units here. All right, the Chimera trying to retreat back, going to go after now perhaps some Knights. Breath of Fire trying to find the flying machines. There's a Staff of Preservation as the Keeper of the Grove. Well, backing into a corner, allowing a well, flying machine getting taken down pretty much in a single, or sorry, a Goblin Shredder getting taken out in a single volley there. 117, 126 damage on the high end with that True Shot Aura 2-2 two, two upgrades. All right. Surprised we don't see one or two Druids of the Claw out here on the battlefield just to get some rejuvenation or ways to heal. Also, that Chimera could try and regroup or head over to this Fountain of Health and heal up as well. Since it is a high-based or high-percentage-based um, unit, it could end up getting taken down pretty fast. All right, what is going to end up happening? This Chimera not going to even get any benefit of the health as it well tries to back away. Water Elemental pretty much downed here as the Keeper of the Grove trying to engage. There's a Breath of Fire finding some flying machines. And here we are. Hippogriff going to try to go after some of those targets as well. There is an Illusion Chimera um, too in all of these fights here as we see some Banished Chimeras unable to engage. There's a Staff of Preservation finding and saving up another one again as both sides are still fighting again. 62 supply compared to 67. Chimeras are trying to retreat back. Are they going to find their targets as Hippogriff Griffs are now making their way over to try and peck down those flying machines. All right, Chimera about to get taken down. Um, Staff of Preservation for the save again, but these Chimeras just want to join into the battle constantly. As you can see, more water elementals, more units getting summoned up. There's Siphon Mana onto the Keeper of the Grove. Keeper of the Grove could have just entangled the Blood Mage. Um, that would have, well, there, yeah, there's the entangle on the Blood Mage as the Expo is about to fall. The Hippogriffs have nothing really to attack. Um, or don't want to engage against the flying machines since there are so many riflemen and sorceresses down on the ground. 
77 supply compared to 61. A lot of the Chimeras, as you re may remember, are low on hit points, so they don't want to really be engaging here. Spellbreakers are joining in on the fight as the Brewmaster, well, could be in danger here. All right, looking at some damage, still racking up mortar teams, lobbing attacks here. Hippogriff's going after the flying machines. And what is going down? The Brewmaster down to 130 hit points. He's going to go ahead and where did he go? Did he get, no, he didn't get Sapphic Sanctuary. He just teleported out? Yeah. Meanwhile, Tree of Life is still trying to mine away, get a little bit more. There's some more Siphon mana. Priestess of the Moon needs to retreat back. Owl Scout will provide sight just in case there are any invisible units now that there are Adept Sorcerers out on the battlefield. Um, but no real way to spam all of that mana. Brewmaster going to get well drained on all of its mana again. Perhaps going to try and take down that one last knight. No knight is going to be able to back away. 72 supply compared to 58. Moon with a slight army advantage now. All right. They need to head over. Head on over to the Fountain of Health here. Heal back up. You remember, Chimeras actually do not have a way to attack air. So um, the flying machines can challenge those Chimeras unless Hippogriffs are there to provide support. That Chimera does get shot down. Br Brewmaster unable to get a breath of fire across there as the flying machines bursting down one of those units. All right, level five, level nearly level four on the Blood Mage. Low hit point knight, no staff of sanctuaries on the Blood Mage or the Arch Mage. That does come as a surprise since we do have expensive units such as knights out here on the battlefield. As we are pushing into this end game scenario, economies are going to be, well, are going to be halted just a bit. Only one uh, mining base for both sides, and both sides are in low upkeep. Uh, we're looking at here, uh, this base is perhaps going to get cleaned up. Uh, Hippogriffs could go after this red drake here. Chimeras could easily just go after all of these targets, and the Chimeras are not sure if they want to try and engage. Hippogriffs can find their targets pretty fast. Now Priestess in the Moon is at level 3, meaning level 2 Breath of Fire. And there's a big Breath of Fire going after those flying machines again. Are we going to see any uh, well, faster movement speed? No, the flying machines able to outfly those, hip um, well, outmaneuver and get away from all of those Hippogriffs there. No movement speed upgrade. Keeper the Grove going to come across here. Perhaps an auto attack or two will find a target and take one down. One gets taken down, but that's it. Meanwhile, we're seeing a rotation as a sock comes across and says, you know what, I need to take down some of these buildings. All right. These Chimera Roos aren't really doing much of anything. Meanwhile, um, while trying to take down the main base here, perhaps try to finish things off as the Hippogriffs are just trying to trap these flying machines into a corner. Tree of Eternity has moved its way into the center portion here and now going to try and well, root, um, root and get that economy going. And this is turning into a base race scenario. Well, Druid of the Claw also retreating back out. 77 supply compared to 74. Mortar teams going after, well, the proper infrastructure, taking down these moon wells, things that represent hit points and, and have, a, well, have a tendency to affect the battlefield. Meanwhile, well, rotating back off to the north again is the, well, Army of Moon as they're going to try and push through all of these um, Ancients of Wind, and this is just a tough spot for them to be in. Water Elementals could get abolished down. Not quite sure why they aren't getting pressured. Flying Machine's going to try and engage, and here we are, here we go. Hippogriffs am able to, well, poke apart many of these Flying Machines again. 65 supply compared to 66, as the Hippogriffs now no longer have any real target. Ancients of Wind are jumping on in onto the battlefield. Mortar Teams are lobbing these attacks, and Moon with 12 supply in... Well, Hippogriffs that can't do anything at all. Uh, not sure how he's going to follow this up. Um, 12, 12 supply, so it's really 32 supply, or no, 24 supply compared to 35 as the Hippogriffs are just looking for targets. The Chimeras are pretty much um, challenged um, here as the Knight. Is it going to end up getting taken down? Yes, it does uh, by the Keeper of the Grove or the Priestess of the Moon. Can't quite tell which auto attack did the final hit. Both sides engaging. All right, Tree Ancient of Wind. Down to 159. Well, going to get taken out. That will get cleaned up once more. Three heroes going up against two, plus an army. And, well, not much can be said. Moon 
trying to hang on, trying to pull back here. Well, as you saw, all of those moon wells were, many of those moon wells were destroyed earlier, meaning that the Priestess of the Moon is having a harder time here. Level 2 True Shot Aura, Breath of Fire blowing things over. Both sides still trying to hang on. Keeper of the Grove needs to stay alive. I believe there was a Druid of the Claw off over here temporarily um, and who could give rejuvenation. There's a Druid of the Claw right there. And, well, there's some more moon wells trying to be uh, uh, built up. All right, low hit point water elemental. Is it just going to get well, rejuvenation on himself now needed? Staff of Preservation brings him back to the center. And this Druid of the Claw is actually going to be fighting next to the mortar teams. C kind of an actually interesting spot to be in. Coming back around, Siphon Mana Banish onto the Keeper of the Grove. Keeper of the Grove in a little bit of trouble. Uh, low hit point Brewmaster trying to get away. And this is still anyone's game. The dominoes can fall in different directions here for this end game scenario as we see a Staff of Preservation bringing the units to the center of the battlefield. All right, Heroes trying to regroup here. Still mining gold off to the north. Meanwhile, Sock has about another four, uh, three and a half minutes of mining left. Dryads trying to run through the gauntlet, seemingly being able to do just exactly that. Archmage, however, does have mass teleport getting it off of one of the ancients as the uh, Knight Elf Heroes able to regenerate health quickly at the Fountain of Health. All right, Brewmaster perhaps should be um, well, getting a little bit more mana again. This game much closer than I thought it, it would be. Yeah, going back and forth as the Dryads are now trying to push back once more. All right, Hippogriff. Well, Hippogriff's not able to do anything. I don't believe there's even any Hippogriff Riders. Water Elemental wants to engage against the... Um, Chimera, that piercing damage, and now inner fire on the rifleman. Well, extra damage, um, extra damage, extra armor, uh, forcing that Hippogriff to retreat back. Or Chimera to retreat back. All right, Moon unsurprisingly has the economic advantage running up on two bases. Sock having, I would say, the hero level advantage near two level six heroes about. And as we see mass teleport getting underway, is the blood mage going to get taken down? No, able to teleport back. If the Brewmaster and the Keeper of the Grove both level up, it is definitely in Moon's favor, um, and I would say he would. I would say he would take a commanding lead right now. Though Sock with that large army, able to move around with that ultimate ability of mass teleport, perhaps that will be enough to cause a crack in. Well, to open up a crack that Moon is showing through his armor. All right. Sock has about a two-minute window of opportunity to make something happen. If it doesn't go well here, well, things are going to start to fall apart. Heroes, dryads, everyone ready to re-engage. Meanwhile, this a Tree of Eternity, 55 over 50 supply, trying to quickly take down this Tree of Eternity, even with fortified armor. There's just mass teleport coming across Hippogriffs, now trying to make their way over. There's some Siphon mana. Are the Mortar teams going to be able to stop it? Here, that is the question, as we see a quick banish onto the Chimeras. All right, Abolish Magic, trying to finish off some of the Water Elementals. Water Elemental gets the last hit on the Dryads. Blood Mage gets up to level 5. Brewmaster still sitting at level 5 here, trying to finish things off. And now there's a mass a level up by the Keeper of the Grove, but is it enough there as the Keeper of the Grove forced to retreat back? And meanwhile, the Brewmaster could still get to level 6. Earthstorm and Fire, a big threat as now the Tree of Eternity about to get taken out. The Tree of Eternity being gone, um, well, no more mining was happening anyways because all the Wisps were out, but still is a, well, a demoralizing loss of a building as we see Mass Teleport Keeper of the Grove trying to come back the other way from the other side. All right, there's one Moonwell that still has a lot of mana. Could have given plenty of mana to the Keeper of the Grove. We'll see if he comes back to regret that as the heroes are still trying to engage here. Priestess of the Moon are fighting. Uh, well, is fighting, taking a lot of damage. Staff of Preservation for the save. And now with the Tree of Eternity gone, actually teleporting it out of combat here. It really looks like the Keeper of the Grove could use a little bit more mana, uh, perhaps try to get a little bit more tranquility going. Dryads are off over here. Wisps and everything is backing up as we're looking at this gold mine about to be done. Moon has two more minutes to make, to take a stand and try and rebuild up his army so that it is strong enough to withstand now.
All right. Chimera Roost getting pressured down. Archmage with Mass Teleport. Blood Mage with Siphon Mana and Banish. Banish has been particularly useful against um, those Chimeras. Um, yeah, against those Chimeras. Meanwhile, Sock is just... And Sock has the ability to just run around, take down buildings, and then use either Mass Teleport or Scroll of Town Portal to get back home quickly. There you have it. They're going to be moving around onto the other side and now putting pressure onto the well, the last mining base of Moon. Additional Moon Walls trying to be uh, well constructed. Breath of Fire perhaps going to try and blow things over. No, nope, going straight into Earth Storm and Fire and trying to well shut down these heroes. All right, Yuna's going to come straight across. We're going to go ahead and engage Hippogriff's flying overhead. But remember, well, that 10 supply does absolutely nothing. Blood Mage does have a potion of lesser invulnerability if necessary. Archmage using a scroll of Town Portal to get away. And well, how to count counter Metamorphosis, Earth Storm, and Fire? Well, you just run away and you wait for the timed life to be done we are looking at some long distance mining by sock as well in order to get gold from this well concealed hill gold mine right up in the center 33 supply compared to 45 this game can still go either way but remember hippogriffs were there to try and protect the chimeras and deal with the fly machines there's no more fly machines so that is still Unless this one Chimera does a lot, um, things are not looking good in the overall supply count. Are under Units getting ready to engage a couple of Owl Scouts, keeping track of this army once more. Archmage does not have a Scroll of Town Portal, surprisingly. Just running back across this way. Perhaps going to try and pick one up. Nope. Is he going to pick one up? Oh, picks up a Scroll of Healing and is ready to engage here. Blood Mage coming back across. Are we going to see some Siphon Mana? There's some Siphon Mana onto the Brewmaster. Brewmaster already seeing that level 6. There's the Entangle onto the Keeper of the Grove. Both sides fighting their way through. And now, well, Keeper of the Grove, has it really used Tranquility? I don't think so. Siphon Mana once more from the panda and the panda is up is now out of mana while the blood mage is upside down on mana needing to give it to a different target perhaps archmage already pretty much topped off as well so with with brilliance aura and so much siphon mana the archmage just has mana for days as the blood mage is still imbalanced in mana and losing some more all right gonna go ahead and try and engage keeper of the grove gonna try and fight B B blood mage once again just shutting down an enemy heroes with that siphon mana it feels weird to see a human hero sh uh, removing all of the mana from night elf heroes it's usually the other way around with a demon hunter Priestess of the Moon still retreating back here. Um, still a very strong combination. Panda cannot get a breath of fire off. And well, now it's up to the Priestess of the Moon. Well, this is one of those situations where is Owl Scout that better or is Searing Arrow better? Siphon mana into the keep or from the Keeper of the Grove again. It looks as though the Ancient of Lores are going to get taken out. And then a Banish for a save followed by Priest Healing. Remember, any heals or spells uh, are more effective while you are in the Ethereal state. So that Mortar team is just getting tons and tons of heals. Tree of Life now uprooted. Going to try and engage as well. Both sides fighting. Multiple heroes going at it. Panda could be in trouble. Down to 400 hit points. But he does have Drunken Brawler. And no, he no longer has that Claws of Attack. And um, does have Vampiric Aura. So actually regenerating a little bit of attacks per hit. Meanwhile, the Priestess of the Moon gets a Staff of Sanct or Preservation back to the Tree of Life here. Panda, is he going to try and turn around and get a Breath of Fire off? Archmage is still leading targets as we are at Artificial Nightfall. Um, yeah, Lunar Eclipse for the win right here for the Priestess of the Moon to be able to hide. And um, right now, or no, Solar Eclipse. What am I talking about? Solar Eclipse. Staff of Preservation moves the Brewmaster back to the other side again. Uh, well, and Moon is just trying to split up all of his heroes in every which way in different directions to try and going. All right, Staff of Teleportation. Brewmaster down to 100, 105 hit points. Going to teleport back to the other side again. And it, this has just been an annoying game of chase um, for so long as another Water Elemental bites the dust. All right. Panda 
needs to figure out a way to get some additional hit points and fight here. Meanwhile, Sock is going to go ahead and just simply heal at the Fountain of Health once more. All of the Breath of Fire um, damage is just not going to stick here as the Fountain of Health is going to erase all of it. What is happening? Peasants still, still trying to clear trees and Moon has just simply left the game realizing that he cannot close it out. Sock being able to do long distance mining, able to come away with the victory. Let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments below. Yeah. Sock with the low all over lower overall score, lower resource score, lower hero score, only the higher unit score, um, being able to kill um kill a decent amount, and comes away with the win. Yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments below.